Continuation, Application of the Perfect Redemption Plan, Part 5, page 167. Chapter 2 Do I have to wait for my church to be in one accord? Many times in church settings they read Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts 2 verse 1 to 4 in churches they will say, it was because they were all in one accord. That is why the power of God could come upon them, and that is why they could do those signs and wonders the Bible talks about. They will say, until the entire church is in one accord, we will not experience Pentecost. The problem with that is, there is always one person in church who is something against somebody. There is always someone who is fighting in the church. So, if our walking in signs and wonders is conditioned to what other believers in church are doing, then we will never get there. We will be constantly changing churches, not because God told us to move elsewhere, but because we are looking for a church where all believers will be in one accord. If you find such a church, praise the Lord. I have not found it yet. Pentecost did not take place because the disciples prayed it down, or because they fasted for that, or because they were in one accord in one place. Do not get me wrong, they did all these things. Yet Pentecost happened because it was the promise of the Father and of Jesus. Jesus said to them, Wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Acts 1 verse 4 to 5. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you for ever. John 14 verse 16. You see, Jesus prayed to the Father to send us the Holy Ghost as he promised us. The disciples just had to wait until the day of Pentecost had fully come. A shadow of what took place at Pentecost is when God took the Spirit that was upon Moses and put it upon seventy elders of Israel. Moses was a prophet, a type of Jesus, who is the prophet, who was to come and Moses prophesied. The Lord your God will raise up unto you a prophet from the midst of you, of your brethren like unto me. Unto him you shall hearken. Deuteronomy 18 verse 15 The Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with you. Numbers 11 verse 16 And the Lord came down in a cloud, and spoke unto him, and took of the Spirit that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass, that when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. Numbers 11 verse 25 That is exactly what took place at Pentecost. The Spirit that was upon Jesus, after he had ascended to the Father, the Father took the Spirit and gave him to all the followers of Jesus, and he rested upon the disciples of Jesus, never to depart again. The Spirit abides forever. Does it mean that Jesus Christ no longer has the Holy Spirit? The answer is no. He always has the Holy Ghost. It is the same thing when God took the Spirit that was upon Moses and poured it upon the elders of Israel. Moses still had the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost in Moses' life was still the same. You must always see the Holy Ghost as a person, not a thing. 
He is complete in every born-again believer. If they have the same revelation Moses had and embrace the same way, sanctified life and truth of Jesus Christ that Moses embraced, they will do the same mighty works. Psalm 103 verse 7, John 14 verse 6 to 14, and John 17 verse 16 to 20. In the day of Moses, all the seventy-two prophesied. At Pentecost, also all the disciples of Jesus prophesied. In the days of Moses, two of the seventy-two were not where Moses told them to be, yet they still received the Spirit upon them. Joshua was not happy with it, because they had not come to where Moses appointed them. But Moses said unto Joshua, Are you jealous or zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Numbers 11 verse 29 You see, Joshua was not in one accord with the two elders who did not come to the gathering, but stayed in the camp. And these two elders were not in the same place as the seventy other elders, but it did not stop the power of God from coming upon them. Why? Because God promised it to Moses. So when people tell you, you must be in one accord and in one place for you to receive the power of the Holy Ghost, it is not true. It just happened that on the day of Pentecost it was so. But even if they were, or one of them was being jealous like Joshua was, or two of them did not come to the meeting like the two elders of Israel did, God will still pour out His Spirit upon all of them. Moses longed for the day when God will pour out His Spirit upon all flesh, just like Joel did too, and it is available to everybody who receives Jesus Christ. But do we have to wait to receive that power? We have read in Acts 1 that the Lord told them to wait in Jerusalem until they received the promise of the Father. Friends, we do not have to wait any more. We do not have to wait for seven days like they did. For Jesus died on the day of Passover, rose on the third day, made appearance for forty days, and Pentecost was seven days after the ascension of Jesus. No! We do not have to wait any more. You can be born again today, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire at the same time, and go about healing the sick, casting out demons and raising the dead, for God is with you. Acts 10 verse 38 Does it mean that we have no waiting period in ministry? I do not say that. Most of the time when you are appointed into one of the fivefold ministries, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor or teacher, God's plan is to entrust you with a great number of people that you will instruct in the ways of the Lord. That is why Jesus spent three and a half years to teach his disciples his way, life and truth. When you read the book of Exodus, God delivered the people out of the house of bondage of Egypt with mighty signs and wonders. The people need to see signs and wonders to believe in God, as it was on Mount Carmel in the days of Elijah in 1 Kings 18. The people also said to Joshua, who stepped into the shoes of Moses to lead them to the promised land, if God was with Joshua like he was with Moses, they will obey all he commands them and go wherever he sends them. Joshua 1 verse 16 to 18 The people do not know their left hand from their right hand, so they cannot decide which gods to follow or which preacher has the right doctrine of the word of God. Jonah 4 verse 11 that is also why God said to Joshua, Today I will begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel, so that they may know that I will be with you as I was with Moses. Joshua 3 verse 7 The mighty signs and wonders tell the people that God is truly approved of this minister of the gospel, so we must listen to what he commands us to do according to the Holy Scriptures.
Peter puts it this way, We know that Jesus of Nazareth was approved of God. Therefore, if a man is approved of God among you, it will be by powerful works and wonders and miracles which God does through him in your midst, as God did through Jesus, as you yourselves also know. Acts 2 verse 22 For Jesus told us, If I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. John 10 verse 37 to 38 Now you understand why Jesus told us, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes on me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these he shall do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you may ask in my name, that I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. John 14 verse 12 to 13 if we do not do the same works of Jesus, people will not listen to us. They will not obey what we command them to do according to the Holy Scriptures. So God's plan is to deliver His people with mighty signs and wonders like He did in Egypt, then teach them His ways, truth and sanctified life and even disciple them. You see it in the book of Exodus, after God had delivered them with mighty signs and wonders, he led them to Mount Sinai to give them his laws and statutes and teach them to sanctify themselves and then bring them to the promised land flowing with milk and honey. Even in church settings, when there are many false teachings that creep into the church, the only way to shut the mouth of other born-again preachers who are teaching those damnable things is to demonstrate the power of God. Paul tells the church of Corinth, saying, Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of those who are puffed up, but the power for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 18 to 20 And my speech and my preaching is not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith shall not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the miracle-working power of God. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 4 to 5 so, when you are appointed for one of the fivefold ministries, God will work on you longer than in the life of the average minister of reconciliation. For you are going to be the example that people will follow in words, in truth, and in life. Paul says to the church of Corinth, Therefore I beseech you, be imitators of me. For this cause I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall remind you of my ways which are in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. 1 Corinthians 4, 16-17 He says to Timothy, who was an evangelist, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example of the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Until I come, attend to reading, to exhortation, and to teaching. 1 Timothy 4 verse 12 to 13 You must understand that when God magnifies you by performing signs and wonders through you, it is so that people will imitate you the way you imitate Christ. So when you are called into one of the fivefold ministries, God might work more on you to make His ways known unto you first, before He starts confirming your words with signs following Psalm 103 verse 7.
It is easier for people who come after you as your disciples because God will just take the spirit that is upon you and all the manifestations of the Holy Ghost you are walking in and impart them on your disciples. Why will your disciples receive them effortlessly even by importation whereas you have had to spend years to receive them? A disciple is a spiritual son or spiritual daughter. He holds you in high esteem and wants to be just like you. He is purposed in his heart to walk in the same steps in the same spirit you are walking in. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 18 The signs and wonders have already captured his attention and he wants to do the same things. The life of Jesus is a seen in you attracts him. So God sees that willingness of his heart and effortlessly imparts to him all the gifts of the Spirit you are walking in. Paul says, If there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man has, and not according to what he does not have. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 12 God knows that that disciple does not know any better, but he is willing to walk in the same steps in the same spirit that the person discipling him is walking in. Therefore God imparts the manifestations of the spirit upon him and expects the discipler to teach him the way, the truth and the sanctified life of Jesus so that he can continue to flow effortlessly in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The greater the sphere of influence God bestows upon a person, the greater the training of that person will be, before he or she is revealed to the world. Mankind is an idolater at heart. When God greatly magnifies you in the sight of the people, they will even want to speak like you, dress like you, relate to each other like you, relate to people. Basically, they will be like a hero to them. And every child wants to become a hero. That is why God will work on you until Christ is formed in you, until you decrease and Jesus increases in you. God hates the personality cult which is idolatry. You will learn to ascribe all the glory, power, righteousness and might to God. The church needs to go back to discipleship. There is no discipleship without teaching. Matthew 28 verse 18 to 20 Let us come back to our discussion on whether being in one accord or not stops the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. In Acts 10, we see Cornelius and all his house and friends. Cornelius summoned Peter to come and share the gospel with him, his household and his friends. Peter was not willing to go there, for it was not lawful for a Jew to keep company with a Gentile. So in other words, Peter was not in one accord with Cornelius, and the people gathered in Cornelius' house. But it did not stop the power of God moving upon the Gentiles. They believed what Peter said, and the same Holy Spirit fell upon them. It is the promise of the Father. Jesus said, These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name they shall speak with new tongues. Mark 16 verse 15 to 20 no matter what Peter thought about the Gentiles, the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius believed the gospel, and the signs followed them. The key is to believe the word of God. If you look at the leader and say the leader despises me, so I cannot receive the same power, you stop yourself. People come up with the story of Achan with the accursed things in Joshua 7 which caused the defeat of Israel at Ai. And they say, if there is sin in the camp, God cannot move. The power of God cannot move. The problem with that is, there will always be someone in the church who is not walking right with God. If you find that perfect church, praise the Lord. People say the early church was like that. 
Let us see. We have the story of Ananias and Sapphira in Act 6. They sold their possession and kept back some of the money and lied to the apostles that they had given all the money. We see that they dropped dead. This is a parallel of what happened to Achan and his family. But in the New Testament, no one else suffered for the sin of Ananias and Sapphira. So you do not have to be afraid of other church members' sins preventing you from having what God has promised you in His Word or to be punished for the mistakes of others. In the rebellion of Korah and all his company, Dathan and Abiram in the wilderness in number 16, when they rebelled against Moses and God, the Lord spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and you will be angry with all the congregation? Numbers 16, verse 20 to 22. So Moses said to God, It is not just for the whole congregation to be punished for the sins of the few. Only those who sinned would be punished. And as we read, we see that only the guilty were swallowed alive when the earth split open. Do not be afraid. Your church cannot stop God's blessing in your life, not even your leaders. You are already blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Your church members and your church leaders cannot change it or reverse it. Ephesians 1 verse 3 God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said... And shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received word to bless, and God has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Numbers 23 verse 19 to 20 Moses sinned when he did not speak to the rock the second time, but instead struck it. It cost him the promised land. God told him because of that act, he could not be the one leading the people of God to the promised land. Numbers 20 verse 11 to 12. But even if the whole generation from 20 years old and above that came out of Egypt perished in the wilderness, including Moses and Aaron, yet Caleb and Joshua were the only two of that generation to enter the promised land with the younger generation. Moses' disobedience did not annul the promises of God to Caleb and Joshua, who brought the good report when they returned from spying the promised land. Numbers 14, verse 28 to 31. God said to Ezekiel and Jeremiah, the children should not be punished for the sins of their fathers, and the fathers should not be punished for the sins of their children, but everybody who sins shall suffer the consequences of his sins. Ezekiel 18 and Jeremiah 31 verse 29 to 30. God's chain of authority is first of all the parents over the children and the husband over the wife, then people in the fivefold ministry. Numbers 30. If a child makes a vow when his or her parents hear about it, the parents can cancel it. If a wife makes a vow when her husband hears about it, he can cancel it. It means that even in a church, when the pastor or an apostle tells the children to vow or pledge something, or to wives to vow or pledge something, their husbands have the God-given power to cancel it. It is wrong to think that because one believer in church, or even the pastor or the apostle is walking in the flesh, or is in sin, it will affect my God-given promises. Why should I be punished for the sin of the church members or church leaders when God is not even punishing me for the sins of my parents or for the sins of my children? 
Jeremiah 31 verse 29 to 30 and Ezekiel 18. You do what is right and believe what is right, then God will be faithful to his promise to you. Throughout the book of Acts and in the epistles of Paul, we read of the Jewish believers who fought Paul. They were not in one accord with Paul. For Paul refused to put the yoke of the law upon the believing Gentiles. But the fact that they were not in one accord with Paul did not diminish the power of God working through Paul. Jesus said, These signs shall follow those who believe, not those who are in one accord, in one place. If you are in one accord and in one place, praise the Lord. But if not, you keep believing and acting on the word of God. To be continued.